Hi, I'm Corey Flemings from Abco Automation. Hey, I want to talk to you today about a story about concrete or about conventional buildings versus automated buildings. In a recent event in my life, we were working with a client who wanted to build a conventional freezer. And we said, no, you should consider automation. And she said, okay, the CFO, we'll consider automation, but it's really just a throwaway option. And I said, throwaway option, that's not true. She said, well, sure it is. You know, automation is so expensive, something that we in the automation world hear all the time. I said, well, you're a CFO. Pull out your calculator and let's run some numbers. So she pulled out her calculator and we went to work. I said, the conventional facility for the operation you want to do is going to take 500,000 square feet. And if you take 500,000 square feet and multiply that by $120 per square foot, what does that come out to? She said, that's $60 million. I said, that's correct. I said, I'm looking at an automated facility, an automated storage and retrieval facility building that is 117,000 square feet. Yes, 117,000 square feet compared to 500,000 square feet. But I said, tell you what, let's add on another 100,000 square feet for docks and workspace and so forth and we'll give you a building that's 220,000 square feet. And if you multiply that by $120 per square foot, what do you get? And she said, crunch, 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 crunch. Oh gosh, my calculator must be wrong. I said, no, it's not wrong. It's only $26.4 million. She said, that cannot be. I said, yes, that is true. And the difference between these two is substantial. But that's not the end of the picture. If we have to go buy land for this process, then we have to even spend more money. And let me show you why. When you build a piece of uh, a building on a piece of property, depending upon local codes and ordinances, you can't consume with your operation more than 50% of the land. So if you take 25% of the land and then add to it uh, your concrete turnarounds, your wastewater basins, your ease, easements, and your parking lots, all of those other pieces of property shouldn't add up to more than 40%. Because in the future, you might want 10%, between 40 and 50%, to build a new maintenance building or whatever. So you don't want to landlock yourself on day one. So you'll only use 25% of the land that you buy. So if you want to buy a put in a building that's 500,000 square feet, then you need to actually buy 46 acres of property to be able to support that operation. And if land is $100,000 a square, uh, an acre, sorry, that's $4.6 million more. Over here for 220,000 square feet, I need two acres to be able to support that, op I'm sorry, 20 acres to support that operation. And 20 acres, again, at $100,000 a square acre, is another $2 million. So look at the substantial difference now when you build a greenfield building, a conventional versus automated, you're talking about a difference of $64.6 million here, and over here, $28.4 million, and I've got a $36.6 million difference between these two. And that's $36 million you can spend on automation to get a building that costs the same as a conventional building that isn't racked, that doesn't have rolling stock, doesn't have a WMS, doesn't have an RF network with guns and so forth. You're talking about a lot of automation material handling equipment that you can invest in before you even turn the key and turn it on, let alone the labor savings once it starts to run. So when people tell you that automation is too expensive and you're going to build a greenfield building, remember this, tale of two distribution centers and how much difference these can make. We have a white paper about this subject of why you should go up. Recommend you downloading it and it can be found here. Thank you very much for your attention.